We correct ourselves. We adjure ourselves on how so you would see this connection of salah whether in Ramadan or outside Ramadan Qiyamul Layl is Qiyamul Layl likewise how we observe the salah so and then many of the Muslims do not pay good attention to salah one of the companions Khalad ibn Rafi this hadith is commonly known as Hadith Musi is Salah. The hadith of the companion who erred in his Salah. The hadith of the companion who erred in his Salah. This companion, his name is Khalad ibn Rafi. He came into the masjid, radiyallahu anhu, to observe Salah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was watching him. He started the Salah. He ended the Salah and then he went to make Taslim to the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam. When he made the Taslim, the Messenger answered alayhi salatu wassalam and said to him, Irje fa salli fa innaka lam tu salli. Go back and pray because you have not prayed. This hadith worries the mind a lot. Because it means that a person could be seen to have prayed, but he would not have been noted, he would not have been recognized in the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have prayed. This companion went on, he prayed again, he came back, greeted the Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam. In the same manner, he returned him, Irje fa salli, fa inna kalam tu salli. Go back and pray because you have not prayed. Subhanallah. On one of those occasions, he said to the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, Wallahi ba'athaka bil haqq. I swear by the one who has raised you with the truth. He said, radiyallahu anhu, Ma uhsinu ghayra hadha. I do not know how better to make the salah. I do not know how to make the salah other than as I have made it. فَعَلِّمْنِي So teach me how to pray. Many of us, many of our brothers, many of our sisters do not pray correctly. But the difference between this companion and many of us is that he said, alayhi radiyallahu anhu, مَا أُخْسِنُ غَيْرَ هذا. I do not know how to do it better than as I have done it. فَعَلِّمْنِي so teach me. So the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught this companion the salah. There are a lot of points of benefit in this hadith. After the one we mentioned regarding the fact that an individual can pray, observe salah, make ruku, go sujood, and he would not have prayed. From its point of benefit is that we have a duty to learn the salah. He says, Alimni, teach me your messenger of Allah. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam began to teach him. In some reports, he even started from wudu. He also told him about istiqbal al-kibla, facing the kibla. So this hadith is popularly called hadith musi is salah The hadith of the companion who erred in his salah. So salah is such, so important. So many of the people would have been performing salah to subh, fajr, bagr, isha, Salatul Asr, and so on, and they would not have been praying. Because they had not prayed, as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as the Prophet of Jesus prayed. The popular hadith, this hadith is also referred to as Hadith Umayy in the way. Umayy in the way was the name of the book of 19, 19 young 
Procedure. We want to obey Allah. So you stand before the Lord of all that exists, subhanahu wa ta'ala, waiting to give obedience to Him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the first of what we do while standing, some of the people stand clasping their feet. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu had seen someone standing like this, joining the feet together. And he said, radiallahu anhu, khalafa sunnah. This person has contradicted the sunnah. So we must not stand in salah like this. Some of the people say women should stand like that. In salah, a rijal, just like in the other aspects of sharia, an nisa shaqa'iku rijal. Inna man nisa'u. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, certainly the women shaqa'iku rijal. They are the second half of men. Meaning, the instructions for men 
are the same instructions for women, except as otherwise stated. If the situation will be different, they will give a different instructions. Uh, they will give a different instruction to the women. Otherwise, the instruction for men are the same instructions for women. Let's not forget. The messenger had not been sent except to the entirety of people. And the people involved, who and who? Males and females. So every instruction that the men are giving in Salah, and generally speaking in Islam, except otherwise stated, that is the same instruction for women. So when a person clasps his feet, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, Khala fa sunnah. When a woman clasps her feet, Khala fa sunnah. She would have been contravening the sunnah. Allah says, Qanitin, Qumu lillahi. Stand for the Allah subhanahu, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ready to obey him. And out of what? While being silent. Because the companions, radiallahu anhu, said, when we spoke to the messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, we would say, assalamu alaykum. And he would answer us, wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullah. But when this verse was revealed, umirna an naskuta fi salam. We were ordered to keep quiet in salam. So, wa qumu lillah. Stand for Allah. Qanitin involves sakitin while being uh, silent. So somebody can ask, brother, what is the proof that in salah we should be silent? Say to him, wa qumu lillahi qanitin. So we stand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qanitin. We will not stand akimbo. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Somebody can say, well, I'm standing. I'm not clasping my feet. You say clasping the feet is mukhalafa to sunnah. Okay, I'm not clasping the feet. My feet is wide. And then he, the person stands like this. Putting the hands on the waist. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An yusalliya rajulu mutakhassira. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith occurs in Sahih Muslim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prevists that the individual observes his salah mutakhassira while having his hands on his waist. So don't stand like this in salah. Don't clasp the feet. Don't stand having your hands on your waist. And then don't forget, standing having our hands on our waist contradicts reverence. Reverence, respect, esteem. None of us will stand before our bosses in our house, in our various places of work, and then stand akimbo. How much more before the Lord of all that exists? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then this standing, this posture, is not a posture that demonstrates readiness to obey Allah. In fact, this posture is a posture that demonstrates contradiction. When a person stands like this, he's ready to contradict what you say. But we should stand qanity. And then he prohibited us from having our hands on our waist. So we drop them. So from the aspects of ta'i'in and qanitin is that we are waiting for the instructions. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we stand before him. Al-Imam al-Nawawi rahimahullah. He says from the aspects of that is that our feet must be in the direction of the qibla. The feet of our legs must be in the direction of the qibla. Some of the people stand like this. This is wrong. Allahu Akbar. It's wrong. The feet go, the feet go in different directions. This is wrong. People class it. This is wrong. People stand like this. This is wrong. The only thing that is correct is that we direct the feet in the direction of the Qibla. While they are not together, we don't have our hands on our waist. We stand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala waiting for his instruction. So the first thing about salah after the qiyam is takbiratul ihram. Why is it called takbiratul ihram? Lexically it means the takbira that makes something become haram. That takbir makes the rest of the actions, we could be eating, we could be drinking, we could be sleeping, we could be talking, we could be doing so many other things. 
But when we say Allahu Akbar, all other things become uh, prohibited. Because he said, alayhi salatu was salam, inna hadihi salah, this salah, la yasluhu fiha shay'un min kalamin nas. It is not appropriate to give anything from the day-to-day -day speech of people. So it is not appropriate to continue to speak. This takbiratul ihram prohibits that speaking. We eat and drink. Wakulu wa shrabu. But once we make takbir, it stops that. So that was why in the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib, Ali Imam Abu Dawud radiallahu rahimahullah, and also Ali Imam Tirmidhi reported the hadith. They say, wa tahrimuha. Mada at takbir. Tahrimuha. What makes things that were hitherto allowed becoming, become prohibited? It's what? A takbir. So we say Allahu Akbar. How do we make the takbir of al-ihram? We say Allahu Akbar. The way to make takbir of al-ihram is to say Allahu Akbar. Because there are some of the madhaib who say when you say Allah, it suffices. But it is wrong. Because what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the one who heard in his salah is that Summa taqulu Allahu Akbar. And he had said before it, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, لا تتم صلاة أحد من الناس The salah of anyone amongst the people will not be complete, will not be perfect until he does so and so and so. One of those things we must do for which when we drop, our salah will not be complete. It's what? The takbiratul ihram. And then the Prophet says, he should say, alayhi salatu salam, Allahu Akbar. So we must say Allahu Akbar after standing correctly. Standing, the hukum of standing is from the arkan of salah. The second rukun of salah is takbiratul ihram. Because without it, the salah has not started. What commences the salah is takbiratul ihram. So we say Allahu Akbar. We have two ways, two levels, either to the levels of our shoulders. Allahu Akbar. Or to the level of our earlobes. Allahu Akbar. They occur in various ahadiths in the books of Sunan. Imma to the level of our lobes, you have bihima uzunay. In some reports, you have bihima mankibay. He will make his hands equal his earlobes, or he will make his make his hands equal his shoulders. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the hands will not be clasped. There are ahadiths in which it says he will open his hands. So don't close the hands. You open the hands in the, to the level of the shoulders or to the level of the earlobes. So we say Allahu Akbar or Allahu Akbar. Like that. Allahu Akbar or Allahu Akbar. While standing, there is still an issue that the ulama are divided upon. Where do we look at in salah? We will all say, we look at the place of sajda. What is correct is that the hadith that specifies looking at the place of sajda is not authentic. That is what is correct. From the statements of the ulama regarding this hadith. The hadith that clearly mentions looking at the place of sajda is not authentic. The only point where there is a clear-cut authentic hadith on what, what to look at in salah is when we erect our fingers during tashahud, whether the first or the last tashahud. We'll come back to it, inshallah. But as for looking on the ground, the correct thing is that that hadith is not authentic. However, we are prohibited from making iltifat in salah, looking around. Aisha radiallahu anha asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, an iltifat if it's salah, regarding looking around in salah. He said sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ذَلِكَ اخْتِلَاسٌ يَخْتَلِسُهُ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْ صَلَاةِ الْعَبْدِ See, that is a stealing. 
that the shaitan steals from the prayers of the people. Looking away in salah. So it is wrong. We will not look away. So where do we look at? We give the look of an individual standing in the front of a person that he respects or she respects and is ready to obey. How do we stand? How is that standing? You stand full of reverence because you are in front of Rabbul Alameen. There are other proofs to make us understand that the companions, radiallahu anhu, when they prayed at home, when they observed the salah behind the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they were not necessarily looking at the place where they made sajda. They told us that, radiallahu anhu, when he read in some salawat, like salat zuhur or asr, they would hear, they would note the movement of his beard. And from that, they knew that, radiallahu anhu, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the surah he was reading in salah. So they looked at him. That's why the madhab of al Imam Malik in this issue is that you look front. There are other issues around it. The first thing to note regarding salah is what? al qiyam Qanitan lillah. Standing out of reverence for Allah, not clasping the feet, not standing akimbo, not standing in any other way, standing firm and then being focused. Then thereafter we make takbiratul ihram, Allahu Akbar. We raise the hands to the level of the shoulder as we described or to the level of the earlobes. There is something around that too, let us quickly mention it. We could say Allahu Akbar and then raise the hands. Or raise the hand as we mention the takbir. Allahu Akbar. Or we can raise the hands and then we say what? Allahu Akbar. They are all allowed. All the reports regarding these three issues are authentic. We can say Allahu Akbar and then raise the hands. The takbir before of all day. We can make them together. Allahu Akbar. We can raise the hand. Allah. We can raise the hand. And then say what? Allahu Akbar. After this state, there's a common thing people make. And it's a mistake. You see many of the people after takbiratul ihram, Allahu Akbar, they drop the hand. This dropping of the hand lacks any proof. And dropping the hand is an action. Don't perform an action in salah without a proof. People make Allahu Akbar, they drop the hand and then fold it. It's wrong. What is described of his salah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is after the takbiratul ihram, yaqbidul yadain. He makes qabd. He follows, he, he closes the hands. He folds the hands. He falls down. Sahal ibn Sa'd as Sa'idi radiallahu anhuma. Sahal ibn Sa'd, one of the companions who lived longest amongst the companions who died in Medina. Sahal ibn Sa'd. He says, Kana nas The people used to be commanded. An yadha ar rajulu kaffahu al yumna ala zira'ihi al yusra. We used to be commanded. Some of the ulama say it means this is obligatory. That the individual folds the hands. Because they used to be commanded. Who was commanding them? The messenger alayhi salam. A lot of issues here. Amongst the ulama. But the least thing is that this is from the mustahabbat of salah. From the mandubat. From the things that we are encouraged to make in salah is what? al qabd Al-Imam Tirmidhi in his Sunan when he reported this hadith. He said it's, this is the position of the Sahaba. The scholars amongst the Sahabas, the Tabi'un, wa man ba'dahum. And those who come after them amongst the ulama. The Sunnah is that after takbiratul ihram, Allahu Akbar, the individual does what? He folds the hands. Because of time, we could go on investigating the how of folding the arms one after the other 
but it will take a lot of our time. So let us quickly cut it short and move ahead. There is the Oslo, there is the methodology of al -Wad. There is also the methodology of al qabd al -Wad, oh, placing the palm on the palm, can occur in two ways. al -Wad and al qabd al -Wad, oh, branches in two ways and al qabdu branches in two ways. So in it all, how many ways can we place our hands on our chests? Four ways. The first two ways al word placing. The last two ways al qabd holding. So al word who is what will kaf al al kaf. The kaf is the palm upon another palm. So we place the right palm on the left palm. This one way of making what? Al word. Word. Or the second way of making al word. Word ul kaf yumna al zira. So how do we do that? Some of our brothers hold here. It's wrong. It's wrong. This is part of the zira. The arm, lower arm, but this is not the place to grab. It says, what will kaf al zira? In some reports, what will kaf al al kaf wa rusk wa sa'id? That report will clarify where we place our hands. What will kaf placing the palm al al kaf? On the palm, or rusk, on the wrist, or side, and then on the other lower part of the arm. This is the correct way to make it. Not like this. Al Imam Ibn Khuzaymah mentioned it in his Sahih. For now, he is the earliest person that I have seen describe it clearer. Al Imam Badruddin Al Aini also did in his Umdatul Qarih. Qari. Sharh Sahih al Bukhari and others, like Al Imam al Shawkani and others. The way to make this second word is Wad ul Kaf al al Kaf wal Rusk was said. Wad. Place the root of the right palm on the knuckle area of the left palm. Place the inner part of the right palm on the wrist and then the other aspects of the lower arm. This is the second way of making what? al -wad. The first way to make al -wad is what? Wad ul kaf al al kaf. One. The second way to make al -wad is what? Wad ul kaf al al kaf wa rusk wa side. So it's not we will not be of we will not be standing quantity by the time we begin to try to grab some of our brothers even hold on to the left elbow they say this is side the side is everything that comes between the wrist and the, and the elbow so once the arm comes from is placed on whatever comes after the wrist that is fulfilled so these are the ways to make al wadu placing one hand over the other. And it is the right that should be placed on the left. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said one day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw me placing my left hand over my right hand in salah. Ibn Mas'ud, he says, Fa'ahad he grabbed my hand and replaced placed the, the left on the ground on the chest and then placed the right one on it. So it means the right must be on the left. But from the Sunan, from the fiqh of this hadith of Ibn Mas'ud, is that we could find our sisters. We could find brothers, fellow sisters, women. A man can find his wife praying, having her left on the right also. Go grab it and change it. Or we find the children praying like this. Grab it and change it. 
or someone who just accepts Islam prays like that. Go grab it, change it. Like the Prophet did. Sallallahu alayhi wa So that is al word. The second one is al qabd grabbing. So qabdul kaf bil kaf. Grabbing one palm with another palm. So we grab the palm of the left with which palm? With that of the right. Qabd. No. Alhamdulillah, somebody can pray like this. The knuckle part of the left, the wrist, and the elbow, like this. The three of them are handles. There's an asar in Musannaf of the Razak that Abu Bakr and Siddiq will do like this. And it's not a sahih. It is a safe of party in this matter. The author of Abu Bakr and Siddiq. Radiallahu. He will pray, handle his top like this. So you see, here is handled. The knuckle area of the left palm is handled. The wrist of the left palm is handled. And parts of the asa'id is also handled. So the other one we placed it on it. But in this case, what do we do? We handle it. So how many ways do we place our palms in salah on our shoulders, on our chests? Four ways. Either by placing or by grabbing. Four ways. Four ways. My dear brothers and sisters, this was how the companions used to learn the salah. If we were hearing this, it's a different thing. We will just try to do it as we have heard it. It will not be like, you do it, somebody puts your hands, no, do it like this. Like Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu mentioned regarding the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa Or like the Prophet described to Musi salah the one who heard in his salah. Or like Malik ibn al-Huwairis radiallahu anhu described to his people. Radiallahu anhu. The salah is learned. May Allah make it easy for us. So we place our palms. After takbir to ihram, our palms are on our chests. Let me quickly say it here too. The large majority of the muhakkikun amongst the ulama, they say our hands should be on our chests. Because the madhab of some amongst the ulama like the Hanafiya is that it should be below the navel. Some amongst the ulama say no, on top of the navel. Some, like Imam Ahmad, say below the chest. This is what they have said. But people like Al Hafiz ibn Hajar, Al Imam al Shawkani, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Adam al Ethiopi, and others, Sheikh Ahmad Shaki, and many others, Abdul Rahman Mubak Khuri, the author of Tuhfatul Ahwal. These are scholars of Hadith who were also great scholars of the Quran. They go around and say, okay. In all of the texts, the best place to put it is on the chest. Because there is no authentic text around it. Even the hadith on placing it on the chest, ulama say the correct thing is that that hadith is weak. But say, they say it is the least weak of all those reports. Yes. Al Imam al Albani mentions it, Hassan, in Sifa to Salat in the but others have spoken about the things. Allahu Akbar. So that hadith, they go around it and it is still the best thing to do. Yes, there are clear cut reports in Bukhari, Muslim, and other books of hadith that he folded his hands. They didn't just find a clear cut authentic to say it is on the chest. But it is the best of what has been found so far. In Sheikh Al Albani gave a fiqh, Rahimahullah. And that was one of the reasons he made, he made the tahseen of that hadith. He said, if we fold the arms in all of the ways that are clearly mentioned in the books of Sihah and Sunan, to fold our arms, 
we will find out that the easiest and the calm place to place it is on the shoulders. Rahimahullah, Fahassan al Hadith. On the chest. Don't forget. The women are the equal equivalents of men in all of these that we have described. People like Al Hafiz ibn Hajar, when they describe Salah, they would say regarding men and women, Lam Yerit Ma Yadullu ala Tafriqatin. There is nothing that has been reported authentically that proves that there should be a difference between men and women. So we continue all upon the same approach in our salawat. So the, the pe person comes up, he stands, and then he makes takbir to ihram, whether to his shoulder level or to his ear level, and then returns the hands to the shoulders, either making al qabt or making a al -wad. The next issue is, what is the first thing to say? Many of the times we hear our brothers say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, starting with Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. This is wrong. There is the hadith of Anas ibn and that hadith occurs in Bukhari and Muslim. It says that Anas radiallahu anhu said he observed the salah behind the Prophet Muhammad. Of course, he, he was the companionship of the messenger for 10 years. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa rabbiallahu. 10 years. And then that he observed the salah behind Abu Bakr and Muslim. Radiallahu anhu. He observed Salah behind Omar, Radhi Allah, Abu Hafs. He observed Salah behind Osman bin Affan, Radhi Allah. He said the entirety of all of these people, when they commence, commence their Salah, what we hear is Alhamdulillah. So does that mean to bring the fear of the Quran? And Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, nothing should be read? Say no. What it means is that the first thing that they hear is Alhamdulillah. So you now ask, are there proofs that we can say some other things while commencing Salah after the prayer to the Quran? Between the prayer to the Quran and Alhamdulillah, are there things to say? Say yes, there are things to say. And the first thing to say is, the supplication to open the sun, to commence the or the Zikrunistikhtar, the words of remembrance with which we commence So how do we know that the messenger is to say that? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He went to the Prophet Muhammad. He says, Ya Rasulullah, the Abi Alka Yahud, me, my mother and father, he sacrificed for you. As valuable as our parents are. Oh, I wish that I have you if I don't have you. Radiallahu anhu. So who took away the takbir? Walhamdulillah. Mother took Your big silent listening is in Bukhari and Muslim. Your big silent after takbir. Before you start, Alhamdulillah. What do you say? This means that. Uh, Abu Hurairah was also observing what Anas was observing. That between Allah Akbar and Alhamdulillah, they were not hearing anything, but he used to be silent. Don't know why he was. Then Abu Hurairah went forward to say, he must be saying something. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, 
ماذا تقول؟ What do you say? And the Prophet said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, أقول, I won't say, اللهم بعد بيني وبين خطاياي كما بعدت بين البشر والمرض. اللهم نقي من خطاياي كما ينقى الصوم الأبيض من الدرس. اللهم اغسلني من خطاياي بالماء والثلج والمرض. آه أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه. The rest of the companions too knew it including us. رضي الله عنه. Because he has reports, he does not have his hadith that I mentioned. In which we say, لا يسمعون, they will not make us hear other things they say, except what? Alhamdulillah. Meaning that they will say some things too. So after that, they have to take around, brothers, what do we say? Dua will say, Dua. And the fact that Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه asked about it, is evidence that it is mustahab. Although others among the ulama say it's from the wajibah of salam. If we look at the Jews, fihi hadith who see his salam, by Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih ibn Umar Masmoon, he mentioned it to be obligated. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded al-Musi'at his salam, the one who heard in his salam, to make these dua al-Sikha. And the fact that it is mustahab does not contradict the fact that it will be wadi. Something is wadi means that it is mustahab and then wadi. If something is wadi, it is mustahab and wadi. It's like asking if salah mustahab. You say no, it's not just mustahab, it is wadi. Because it cannot be wadi, except it is what? Mustahab. So the fact that Abu Huraira's hadith points to the same power, it does not prohibit the hadith of uh, Abu Sayyid Salam from becoming uh, having the ruling of the obligation, but have it as one rule because that's the position of the Dumbo. Let's just leave it at that. That to our sifta is what? Mustahab. And it's the first thing to say afterwards that we are the So after we say Allah, Akbar, we make Allah or Allah. What do we say? Look at how we start this communication with Allah. Oh Allah, by the way, you are going to require separate, speak away. Give a separation between myself and my sins. As you have put away the east from the west. Allahumma nakti ni mutawaya ya Oh Allah, purify me from my sins Kamali makasawu na abiyahu ni na janis As the pure white cloth is put away from me Or is cleansed of what? That is death Things Allahumma nakti ni mutawaya ya Oh Allah Cleanse me, wash me off my sins Bilma With water, with blood, with food Ice Well, but and he killed five people from this. We are standing before the Lord who will beg him for me to remove my sins. The Allah will be all of us. One of the Ulama was asked about Kushu and Salah. What is the meaning of Kushu? The one you perform the Salah according to the Sunnah you have to show. If the person follows all of these with his mind, in the salah. The mind will be in that salah. If he makes a fear of the cross, Allah will not be his mind that he can find. When he has his mind and then he can't stand like that, the hand will be like this. The mind and the attention will be following the salah. Now, the one who is back, aside that of Abu Ghraya, that is that of Aisha, Omar of the Allah, that of Aisha of the Sunnah of Allah, that of Omar of the Sahih Muslim, of the Allah, and that's the most common amongst them. When Omar Rasulullah Anhu was explaining this to Ali Sikta to people, he said, Why are you doing this? Everybody was listening to me. What is that? Subhanakallah, what happened? What the Bible has spoken? The Bible has written. What I love is from the Hadith of Omar Rasulullah Anhu. Aisha Rasulullah Anhu. 
you are the same that So you either say that for Kaburea, or you say that for who, or they are our ass. We can go back to the book, it's no Muslim. It's no Muslim level. But these two are used to mention what is in this kind of circumstance. So that we can go see. So after you are the Islam, you say, Allah, Allah, and the beginning of Salah, you place the right palm on the left palm on our chest, you make the body sit down, what will follow? At least they are about you. At least they are about you. know why? We want to read Quran. And Allah has commanded us in Hanan to Whenever you recite the Quran, whenever you recite the Quran, as refuge with Allah's hard work. Against who? Ash-Shaykh. Abdullah ibn Masood, Jubayr ibn Mufayyid, Abu Sa'id ibn Mufayyid, all the prophets. The prophet taught us how to do that. What do you say? أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونفخه ونفخه. Don't say stop. This one is wrong. If it is said that anybody who says the Salat of Maghrib has five thousand dollars to pay, between now and Salat of Maghrib, I'm sure everybody here will know. Just say this decade to have five thousand dollars. Every one of us, even the children who teach them before we leave here. Yeah. I want to be like Sabirina. Mina Shaybad. Mina Hamsi. Wana. Wana. This is the correct way to make this the other answer. If you ask, what about the red cloud? One of the scholars said it is not reported that the prophet used to say that in Salah. Who said that? Imam Ali. He mentioned that in the answer of the Salah. I have tried to search whether he said that. What are the prophet has said? But you don't find any authentic report regarding that. So we stand by that. Salah is something in which every statement and action in it is as we are taught. So as you make your istiada in Salah, make an istiada that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has taught us. If you wish, we will be that. Because sometimes it is allowed to say these things aloud. Especially when you are with people who don't either know them or who don't care about them. This is from the Sunnah to say them aloud. The companions used to do that. Rabbi Allah. Ordinarily, they should be said silently. But when you are in a situation where people will ask you, What have you done? It will give you an opportunity to explain. Or to knew it, but for what? People know so they will become oblivious regarding it. May Allah put them. And they carry this kind of mindset to Salah. It is wrong. So we should say, Aruhu Billah is Samir al Ali, Mina Shaybad al Raji, in Khamsi, Wanafi, Wanafi. Why do you come to Salah? Why? Because Allah says to us, and the way to do that in Salah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam exemplified it and taught us to do so. I hope that this point is clear. So after the day of the Quran, Allah, 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 what next will we do? We go in our hands, on our chest. What next will we do? Do I just sit down? What next will we do? <laughs> what is the next thing? Don't say Alhamdulillah. Don't say Alhamdulillah. Until you have read Bismillah. 
Don't say, Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Start with Bismillah, Ya Rabbil Also silent. Because Bismillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen is the first verse of al fatiha The first verse of Surah al fatiha Al-Sahih in Aqwal is what? Bismillah, Ya Rabbil Imam al-Bayhati quotes a hadith from Abu Huraira that the Prophet Muhammad said, إِذَا فَرَعْتُ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ When you recite Alhamdu, it's one of the names we can call that song. We call it like that when we are younger than this. Alhamdu. When you recite Alhamdulillah, Hukrah, Bismillah, recite Bismillah. It says in that hadith, it says because Surah Al Fatiha is Umul Kitab, is Asab al Matani, it is Umul Quran, and other things. It says, Rabbi Alayhi Salaam, for in the Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Ida. Inna Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Ihtaha Because Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is one of us One of us Al-Fatiha So the first verse of Surah Al-Fatiha is what? Bismillah ar-Rahim Who said that? The Prophet Muhammad Those among the ulama who say Oh Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is not the first verse They say the statement is the statement of Abu Yair Al-Imam Abu Shama he has an entire book on this issue. Abu Shama is a 5th century scholar of Islam. He has a book, Al Basman. An entire book on this issue. What did he call it? Al Basman. After the death of the Sadiq authentic, he said, even if you say that it's the statement of Abu Huraira, would Abu Huraira be saying, Rabbi Allah, that Bismillah Rahman Rahim is from Surah Al Fatiha? It means that he said that it is from the verse of the Quran. Without having heard that from the Prophet Muhammad, he said, It is not from amongst those things that somebody can say, My opinion is that this lie of man of him is wrong. Surah Al Fatiha. Except that he had heard that statement from who? From the Prophet Muhammad. More so that we have the reports that directly ascribe that statement from Abu Hurairah to who? To the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There's a second premise. And Imam Dawood put me reports from Umu Salama radiallahu anhu that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to cut his kira'ah ayatan ayatan he used to cut sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would cut his recitals verse by verse sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he then said she wayaku he would say bismillah rahman rahim ayatan Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ayah. She gave the clear things. And Imam Ibn Muslim also reported this hadith. That Ummu Salam, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ayah said, The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam caught his recitals verse by verse. And then he said, Bismillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ayah. And Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ayah. What does that mean? That Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim is the first ayah of the Alhamdulillah ar-Rahman Surah Al-Sahih. So three things we say silently. The first one is what after the day of the Quran to have a sister. The second one is what Alisiyah. The third one is what Alisiyah. So don't ask what is the ruling of Al-Basmala. The ruling of Al-Basmala is the ruling of Basmala. Because because this is is one of so so say this before you recite al fat it does not contradict that hadith of Ayat al I hope you remember this discuss after Allah Allah is Allah 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 Allah
Head on the ground, the nose will not be on the ground. If he puts the head on the ground, the nose will not be on the ground. So sometimes he puts the nose, he does not put the head. I remember asking my father this question Why does this man behave like this? Sometimes the head on the ground, the nose will not be on the ground. Sometimes the nose on the ground, the head will not be on the ground. The two must be on the ground. Both the forehead and the tip of our noses. They make one count. Out of the seven things that the Messenger alayhi salatu was salam was ordered to place on the ground during Sudi, the first of them is what? The forehead and what? The tip of the nose. Then the two palms. Making how many? Three. Then the two knees. Making how many? Five. Then the tips of the, the toes. Making how many? Seven. He said, I have been commanded to make sure that as I prostrate, seven things are on the ground. So we prostrate seven things on the ground. Don't forget, seven things must be on the ground when you prostrate. In another hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood, also the hadith of Abu Hurairah the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, you know, he was keen about knowledge. When at the beginning, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will say Allahu Akbar, he will be silent. What did Abu Huraira do? He went to him and said, Messenger, that's your silence. What are you doing there? What are you saying? This is the symbol of someone who is keen about learning. When in the fitna after the messenger went away, there was trouble amongst the people. He was not involved. He was teaching in the classes. When trouble comes to people, when people go away, he begins to teach. Which person's knowledge will be spread? The knowledge of those in issues or the knowledge of those in the classrooms? Of course. So you hear about Abu Huraira in about every circumstance. Rasulullah, when the prophet was alive, he came. The last three years of the prophet's life, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Abu Huraira was with him. So much that when the people went to the market, he was not going. He bore the consequent hunger. Because if you are not trading to make profit, you can't be begging. So what consequences upon that? What, what comes upon that as a consequence? Hunger. He bore it. But Allah still diverted wealth to him afterwards. He became so rich. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu. Because wealth and knowledge are two different things. And Allah gives the two of them. Let's leave that at that. Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, was always asking the Prophet. So the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Is a sajada ahaduku. When any of you is in his sujood or makes his sujood, let him not go on the ground, stay on the ground as a dog does. How does the dog do? It places its arms inside itself when it goes. So you see it like that. It clasps what we can say the elbow to the chest area. And you see it on the ground like that. Say, don't behave like that. Open your hands. So when you go on Sudhu, women do that a lot. You see them like this. And I have read it in the book before that. That is how women should. But it's wrong. The Prophet says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is a When any one of you, you who, my Ummah, when you go on Sudhu, let him not clasp himself. On the ground, if tira shall kill, the way a dog will fold itself on the ground. What did he say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. First instruction, don't clasp. Meaning that we open our armpits not to give the next person some form of elbow, but by way of keeping away your elbows away from your body when you are seated. Then he said, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
wal yadhumma fakhidhay let him also eat his lamps together don't clasp your hands on your body but let your legs be fakhis our lamps so if we are to do we want to put our lamps together with the lamps in sujood who said so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so i will make this correct to you inshallah then i will explain a point regarding putting the lamps together while in sujood so we make sujood we are on the ground good for the seven places go the tip of the nose the forehead the tip of the nose the forehead Then he says this these hands in some reports when the messenger made nawafil the hands will be so away from his body to the extent that a small ship can pass in between it goes to show the extent to which we must distance our elbows from where from our body distance and then our laps he says well you have to ma let him connect the legs for the leg so he puts them together he goes and so you not the tip of the head and the tip of the nose you not the palms you not the knees and you not the feet behind making seven i'm coming back to the feet inshallah so like that the palms the fingers of the palm should be directed to the qibla not open spread away and not clasped in a fist all of them facing where direction of qibla that occurs in the hadith of abdullah ibn umar all of them must be facing the qibla like that and then the head will be in either if the hand will be either to the level of our shoulders or in between our ears while at the ground so we are either like this in between here or like the knees together and then the feet our feet must be connected together when we connect the feet and place the tip of the toes we fold it such that the tip of the four toes is directed to the qibla like this that is the correct way to make a sajda who said so the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can ask you know, all of these they are things who said so? this is the lesson the messenger alayhi salatu wasallam was raised to teach us allah was telling us in the quran pray pray observe salah he did not explain the salah he raised the man sallallahu alaihi wasallam go and teach them how to pray this is what he taught us his companions have reported his actions and statements regarding these matters to us so we make sujood like that that is the physical the the hay of sujood the man of sujood physical so what do we say in sujood subhana rabbi al a'la subhana rabbi al a'la subhana rabbi al a'la and now we can also say subuhun quddusun rabbul malaikati wa ruh subuh is this complex subuh quddusun rabbul malaikati wa ruh oh subhana rabbi al azim ah subhana rabbi al a'la subhana rabbi al a'la that is sujood after the sujood the sujood is from the arkan of salah So after the sujood we sit down we come back to sit down after sujood 
We say Allahu Akbar and then we sit after sujood. The sitting in between the two sujood is usually called al jalsa to Baina as sajdate. The sitting in between the two prostrations. Because we will prostrate twice. But this sitting has two ways. When we stand up from the sajda, two ways. The first way is to sit, let me say the most. Before that, I had promised to say something about connecting the feet when we are in sujood. There's hadith in Sunan Abi Dawood. Hadith of Abu Humayd as sahib In one of the reports, this hadith has a lot of reports. In one of the reports, he says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you firmly delay his sujood. He will open his two legs when he is on sujood. This hadith is very weak. It's not reliable. So don't depend on it. It's not a reliable hadith. That is, it is not authentically transmitted from the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa Now, al jalsa to be in a sajidate. We are upon the sitting in between two prostrations. So when we are prostrating, and we stand up from prostration, Allah This sitting is called al ikaf the two feet will be joined, the toes of the feet will face the Qibla, the heels will be joined, and then we sit on our heels. We'll place our two palms either on our knees or on our lungs. The Imam al mentioned that the scholars have a consensus that wherever Wherever, either on the laps or on the knees that the hands are placed, it is correct. There are reports for them all, and they are authentic. So we place the hands either on our knees, like this, or on our palms, like that, or on our laps, like that. But the sitting is the point here, between two prostrations. This sitting is called al ah and it occurs in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, in Sahih Muslim, that it is from the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa to sit like that in between two prostrations. So that is one way of that sitting. The second way to sit in between prostrations is to make a liftiraj. Iftiraj. Do you right You right feet. You make the toes of the right feet to be in the direction of the Qibla. You make Firash. This rug is called Firash. So you make your leg to become a Firash. That is something you can sit on. Like that. And you sit on it. That's why the sitting is called what? A Firash. Making your leg to become something you can sit on. So you sit on the leg. You erect the right leg, the right feet, make it be in the direction of the two, like this. So we either sit like this, the knees together, the heels together, the toes in the direction of the pillar, and then we sleep on it, or we are sitting in the rush. Like that. These are the two ways we sit in between two prostrations. And then we say, Allah will fill me, Warham, Wahdini, Wahafini, Wajburni, Warzukni. About six words will be said. So we say all of them in that sense. And then we go back to Sajda again. So, in the second Sajda, we do as we have done in the first uh, Sajda. You can now ask, what is the proof that we should do as we have done there? There are clear cut reports from the Prophet that as we did in the first Sajda, that is what we do in the second uh, Sajda.
So what does it remain for us? Standing up for the second rock hour. How do we stand up for the second rock hour? How do we stand up from the sitting after we stand, after we have to do? How do we stand up? There are issues around here. When I look at you say the correct thing, when I clarify, the correct thing is to stand up and sit down. Calmly, before we stand up, reclining on our hands. When we are subdued, you stand up, you sit down, if there are, come first, and then we place some people will say, young people now tell us to, now say to us we should blow. The prophet was doing like that. Sallallahu alayhi wa Can you think that the messenger did be a thing of play? During salah? Was he play? Sallallahu alayhi wa Sometimes people make a jest of a thing and the implication of the statement are very, very severe. Salah is not a thing of play. There is no play in it. So when we stand up from, when we want to go into the, go up for the second rock, I will sit down first. Man ibn Kuwaris, he said, Kana Nabi, Ra'aytu Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Liza arada an yakuma ila raka'at al-thaniya. Istawa qa'idah. Istiwa, he will be balanced for six down balance. He says, Lam yen hat, he will not stand up hatta yastawi ya qa'ida until he has sat down. Ka. Don't say where did they find the hadith. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. The Prophet will not stand up. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hatta yastawi ya qa'ida until he is balanced. Sitting, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then in another hadith, he says, "Summa yakumu mu'tamidan." He now stands up while resting. He didn't say Allah ya dayhi. Ulama says, "Okay, how does he stand up reclining without putting the hands on the ground? How someone is to stand up and recline?" Okay, how does he stand up reclining without having his hands on the ground? Abu Kilaba was the Tabi'i who reported this hadith from Malik ibn Huwais. When he prays to stand up, he sits down. He was there when Malik ibn Huwais, he said Malik ibn Huwais came to the masjid in our locality. When he was describing the prophet's prayer, he would stand up resting on his hand. So when Abu Kilaba performs salah, and Imam Ibn Abi Shaiba in his Musannaf, he said he places his two hands on the ground, resting on them before he stands up. That was what Malik told them he saw the prophet doing. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is the same Malik that the Prophet told Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Salu Kamara El Tumuni. So Malik ibn Khwarez came to explain this is how the Prophet used to pray. He would rest and then stand up. So why do some of the people not do it? They say, you know, the Prophet did it because he was old, he was chubby. Ulama so don't do this kind of irresponsibility. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told the man, pray as you see me pray. The man went to his people after the demise of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and said to the people, look at me, I will show you how I saw the messenger pray. And he ordered me to pray as I saw him pray. And the man did the same thing. You come 1,400 years later, I say no, it was because the Prophet was old.
So we follow the instruction. Pray as you see the messenger pray. How did Malik see him pray? When he's standing up from the prostration to the second rock arm. Jealous, stawar jealous. Lam yen how hatta ayastawiya jealous. He will not stand up until he becomes balanced. Sit in your court, he will sit down first. And then after that, what will he do? He will recline us on his hands and then he will stand up. That's the way to stand up for the second day rock up. But there are some slight differences between the first and the second rock up, such as that in the second rock up, there is no dualistic star because we are not starting the solar again. Where do we start from this time? It's the Allah, because we are still going to read Quran. Another difference is that in the second rock'a, we make our Kira'a, the Surah we read, wherever we read it from, we make it be lesser in its length than the first uh, rock'a. The second rock'a should be lesser in its length, should be shorter than the, than the first rock'a. Those are some differences between the two. Otherwise, everything we do in the first rock'a, those are the same things we do in the second rock up. I hope that the point is clear. Now, we only left with two things to explain before we end this discussion. Two things. Because we have said everything. You are either repeating a first rock up, or you are in a second rock up, or you are standing up to a second rock up. And all of these we have mentioned them. Two things we need to mention. Al Jalsa to lit Tashahud, the sitting for at Tashahud, Jalsa to Tashahud, the sitting for at Tashahud in Awal and Jalsa to Tashahud is time. The sitting for Tashahud, the first, the first Tashahud, and the sitting for the second there at Tashahud. They have some slight differences. So we should address the first Tashahud. We make it in Salatul Maghrib. Salatul Zohr, Salatul Asr and Isha. You know we make Tashahud twice in these prayers. The only prayer where we make Tashahud once is which Salat? Salatul Fajr. For all of us, we make Tashahud twice, first and second. So let's describe these two sittings. The first Tashahud, only one way of sitting is established. And that is al -tirash. You know if tirash Make your left feet a rug. Don't forget rug. Make your left feet a rug for yourself and sit on it. And then erect. Erect what? Your right feet. Make sure that its thin, its uh, toes have their fingers in the direction of the kibla. Place the hands on either the mouth or where? Or on the knees. That is the first um, sitting. Then point your fingers. There are two ways to point the fingers. Sometimes we find our brothers when they sit for at the Shahud in Awal, the first Tashahud, they point their hands like this. It's wrong. Like this. It's wrong. Like this. Because he will be like this and then he will point his finger. Like this and then he points his finger. He was not said to turn his arm. He will sit and then he will point. So there is no, if you find somebody do like this, just ask him, excuse me, why did you do like this? When you came up from side, were you keeping your hand like this? No, he will place his palms like he did in the Al-Jal Satubayna or here, wherever. And then he erects the first finger we call it. Or the index finger. I think it's called fourth finger to something. English people, what do you call it? Four finger. The four finger. And the swing at that is to look at that finger. You'll be looking at the finger. A better thing to do is to shake that thing. The correct thing that that hadith of Zaida ibn Waqid is authentic. Allah so, so shake it. There are mistakes here people make too. 
Some brothers do up and down. They did not say the messenger used to raise it up and down. And the companions were very apt in their descriptions. Some people do it like this. They did not say he used to turn it left and then right. They say he shook it to shake it. Shake it in a manner that it can't be said to be up and down. Neither can it be said to be left and right. And look at it. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَإِنَّهَا أَشَّدُّ عَلَى الشَّيْطَانِ مِنَ الْحَيْنِ It's stronger against the Satan than iron. When you do like this, ha, Shaitan takes a race. May Allah protect us. So shake the finger and look at it. The hadith is authentic in Sunan al Nasai that when he shakes his finger, he looks at it. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then what do we say? There are four things to say. The first one, I call it at tahiyyat This tahiyya is widely reported. There is a tahiyya of Ibn Masud. There is a tahiyya of Ibn Abbas. There is a tahiyya of Omar. There is a tahiyya of Ibn Umar. There is a tahiyya of Ayah. And there is a tahiyya of Abu Sa'id al Khudri. Radiyallahu anhu. The best thing for us is to memorize all. Say this sometimes. This one at another time. This one at another time. As we all like to have many clothes. You wear this one today. Another one tomorrow. Another one next day. How is that? Because the Prophet too, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what it meant was that he said different things, different things. He had varied, he, he varied them. And one of the wisdom behind varying these things is that it will help your attention. You will say, well, which one will I read today? Make I read Aisha's poem. So you read Aisha. In Isha, you say, oh, let me read Abu Sayyid. You read Abu Sayyid. It will help your attention in that salah. So we do that. We shake the hand, the, the finger, while looking at it. So the first thing to say is what? at tahiyyat But the most common is that of Abdullah ibn Masood. He would say that the Prophet taught him to say. He said the Prophet taught us to say the tahiyyat as he taught us the Quran. You will see teaching, 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 coming up repeatedly about salah. But we least learn salah. We least learn salah. Parents, come back home. Let's sit down, the boys and girls. Come, pray, let me see. As we teach them ABC, from the days in the kindergarten, we look for teachers to teach them after school at home. What about salah? The salah with which they will move on to the hereafter. The first thing to say is at tahiyyat. So we say that of Ibn Masood. Because it's the most common. At tahiyyat wa salawat wa tayyibat lillah. There is wa wa wa. Go to Sahih. At tahiyyat wa salawat wa tayyibat lillah. Assalamu alayka. Please pardon me to continue. Ayyuhan Nabiyu. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As-salamu alayna wa ala ibadillahi salam. It has not ended. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. There is no wahdahu la sharika la. In that of Ibn Masood. Wahdahu la sharika la occurs in the tahiyya of Abu Sayyid al Khudri. Don't mix it up. Because the Prophet was not mixing it up. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa if you want to stay with that of Ibn Masud, remain there. If you want to read that of Abu Sayyid and Qudri, then you say Wahdahu la sharika. But in that of Ibn Masud, no Wahdahu la sharika. It is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasul. At tahiyyat wa salawat wa tayyibatu lillah. Assalamu alayka. Now, it is reported from some of the companions that when the Prophet went away, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, when he died, sometimes some of our brothers don't like us to say the Prophet died, and he died. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah said it in the Quran that in Naka Mayyitun, you Muhammad shall die. Wa innahum Mayyitun. Those who think he should not die too will die. 
Those who think they should die too will die. <laughs> so the Prophet died, sallallahu alaihi wa sallam, and the, some of the companions. Why did I say some of the companions? I will answer that question. Would say instead of assalamu alaikum, they would say assalamu ala nabi. Ulama say no. Say what the Prophet said. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because if he wanted us to say assalamu ala nabi, he would have told us that when I die, say assalamu ala nabi. That's one. Secondly, when the Prophet himself was alive, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because assalamu alaikum means the Allah's blessed salutations be on you. So they say, oh, now that he's died, he has died. So she said, may Allah's blessing salutations be on him. So, okay. The companions who were living in Makkah when the Prophet was in Medina, how did they used to say? Did they used to say, Salamu alayhi, Assalamu alayhi, Assalamu ala nabi? Because those who don't live in the same city with him are in the same ruling with those who come later. They are, if you say those in Medina, we are addressing him directly. Those in Mecca, where are they addressing right? Those in other cities, in localities, where are they addressing directly? That is one way of looking at it. Secondly, Omar radiallahu anhu, when he taught people tahiyya, he said, Assalamu alaikum. After the Prophet had passed away, when Omar was leading the people in Salatul Juma, he would recite and tell them that they should say, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuha nabi. Nobody stood up to say, Omar, don't say Assalamu alaikum. Say Assalamu ala nabi. And Omar radiallahu anhu is from the most learned and the closest of the people to the Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He is the second best person in this ummah. So we follow that sunnah of Omar. Without any kind of juristic reasoning connecting to it. We follow Omar. We follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He didn't teach us any other thing except Assalamu alaikum. We follow Umar too, radiallahu anhu, who was taught him after the Prophet had passed away. We follow him in that. So we follow the Prophet, we follow the Umar, radiallahu anhu. His position is closer to being correct than saying, Assalamu ala nabi. I hope that this point is clear. So after that we say, Ashhadu an la ilaha. After that we say, so now how many things? The tahiyyat, the tashawhud, then salatu ala nabi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammad. Go and learn it. I remember that when I was far younger than this, I taught my 82 year old mother how to sign. How to make a signature. I look for the easiest thing that she can write. So I'll pick her hand on a viral and try to make her write it. So she could sign her checks. We can make our old parents to say something near this, if not exactly. But doing it exactly is the best for us. Not to talk of our young children at home. Let us pay due attention to these matters. So we made at tahiyyat at tashawud salatu ala nabi, and then what? at dua We pray for ourselves. The Prophet taught us many dua, many dua, and the Prophet's supplications are in the best of supplications. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is in the first tashahud. One difference, let me quickly say that, between the first and the second tashahud, we know it, is at ta'awuz min al arbaim asking Allah's protection from four things. You say that in the second tashahud, you don't say that in the first day. Uh, so first tashahud has four things. The tahiyyat, the tashahud, salatu ala nabi, and dua. The second tashahud has how many things? The tahiyyat, the tashahud, salatu ala nabi, dua, and asking Allah's protection against four things. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min azabi jahannam. May Allah protect us. O oh Allah, I ask your refuge away from the punishment of the blazing fire. I also ask your protection from being punished in the grave. 
from the punishment of the grave. Protect me against it. Taught me. وَأَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنْ فِتْنَةِ الْمَحْيَا وَالْمَمَاتِ Protect me from the trials of existence. Are there not trials in existence? Fitina igisi aye. Show me. Protect me. Walmamat. And the trials of death. The last one. Wa'auzu bika min fitna til masihi tata. I also ask protection from the Antichrist, the ardent liar. Protect me against him. So you say this in the second Tashahud, but you don't say it in the first uh, Tashahud. I'm already talking about the second Tashahud. The other thing we also like to talk about the second, of course, after the first Tashahud, you stand up the way you stood up for the second rock up. How? You rely Relax on your two hands and you stand up. So then you make the first shahud, you stand up. In the last shahud, I have said the expression scope. So the only thing that remains regarding that is the sitting of the second shahud. In that too, only one way of sitting is allowed. What is that sitting? It is called at You sit it in Zohor, in Asr. In Maghrib and in Isha. What is it called? At Tawarruq. At Tawarruq is sat in two ways. At Tawarruq is made in two ways. Now you want to make your sleep. The city of Tawarruq. Tawarruq, you have a part of our buttocks, the left on the ground. We have our right feet erected with its toes in the direction of the Qibla and the left feet coming out. This is a tower like this. Tower. Like this. There is cold here. The man came from one place where there, is, there are usually no cold. Disturbing the man. So he, some of his, his um, uh, veins become stiff because of the cold in the masjid of Imam. Okay. <laughs> so you make the rook. Make the work like this. Like we said, the hands can be either on our shoulders or where? Or on our knees. On our shoulders or on our knees. I said the work is sat in two ways. So how is the second way of sitting the work? The two feet face in the same direction. And this is authentic. The world. You are either erecting the right feet or you are spreading the right feet. I hope that it's clear. So these are the ways that we sit. As for the pointing of the finger, two ways also. You make a ring. Ring, real ring. Meaning that it must be circular. You make a ring of the thumb and the middle finger, a ring of it. And then you point the forefinger, like that. Or you grab the mid finger with the thumb. Yes, and then you point it. Make them. Make it. Make it. Yes. I 
I didn't see us doing you know, that kind of thing. Then we grab like that. But this is the way to make that. What remains of us here is the sleep. So after we finish the prayer, the Tashanhud, Salatul al Nabi, dua for ourselves, and seeking refuge against those four things, then we say Tasmeen. The first way to say Tasmeen, the most widely reported, is to say Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The cheek must be seen at the back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Some people say, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you are worshipping Allah. Do it properly. Sometimes there is a job mentality. In the place of work, the boss says, man, this is work. Quickly the mind changes. Go. Man, this is salah. Let the mind change. So we make the same. To what extent will we turn to the extent that our right cheek may be seen from somebody behind us? Likewise, we will let the left cheek may be seen by somebody behind us. This is in terms of the posture. But in terms of what we see, we say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Nadaru in a wife in the 